and welcome from the NASDAQ market site. I'm Jarrett Banks of IPO Edge. Joining me today is Paul Chang, the CEO of Brand Engagement Network, otherwise known as Ben. Paul, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. Let's get right into it. What does Ben do and who are your customers? Well, Ben AI, we build uh, helpful AI assistants and we deploy them to businesses who want to create a better customer experience for their customers. Um, so we know that AI has been touted for, you know, uh, capable of doing many things. Uh, so far, many companies have not been able to realize uh, those benefits. Uh, but we believe we have the technology uh, to be able to uh, provide staff augmentation, to be able to provide a better customer experience to their customers, uh, and perhaps even drive additional revenue by being able to share helpful information uh, to their customer base. All right, great. Now, the news flow on AI can be overwhelming at times. How do you differentiate yourself from your competitors? Yep. So, Ben AI does three things really well. So, one, Ben AI is safe. Two, Ben AI is intelligent. And three, Ben AI has been designed to scale. So, we are safe because we are not getting the answers from the internet because when you use uh, other AI systems that are open to the internet, you could be getting answers from you know, pages on Reddit, right? which could be someone's opinion. We only get our information from uh, validated sources, either from, let's say, pharmaceutical manufacturers or automotive manufacturers who have the facts about their particular products, and that is where we get all of our information. Second, uh, our AI is intelligent, meaning we have the deep expertise that the customers are looking for. They're not looking for generic answers, they're looking for specific answers to specific problems that they're dealing with, and they shouldn't have to be on the phone on hold for 30 minutes mm. to get that answer. We believe this day and age, this is 2024, they should be able to get the answer immediately. And three, we're scalable, meaning we built a, our own large language model uh, we call it small footprint language model um, that allows our uh, AI uh, platform to be much more efficient. So it's faster, it's cheaper, and there's higher concurrency. Um, and in many cases, we could run our AI system based on CPUs and not need to have the GPUs, which is uh, huge at the moment because of the obviously the shortage and the cost and all of the issues that go along with uh, requiring GPUs. Right. How does this technology enhance customer relationships? Yeah, so I mean, as I mentioned, you know, if you're making a call to a customer center or customer service, you should not be on hold. Um, not 30 minutes, not even three minutes, right? This is a day and age where we should be able to uh, be able to talk to someone immediately and be able to get our answers resolved. So we know that the brands, the companies that deploy our solution, will have better customer experience, and that should lead to higher customer satisfaction. And they can accomplish all of that while lowering the overall cost to serve. Um, and in addition, you can also do outbound campaigns in a much more efficient way, right? If you wanted to, for example, do a vaccine campaign, because obviously the fall season's here, um, that may require you know, hundreds or thousands in a call center to be hired and trained. Well, with our AI platform, you could deploy tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of concurrent AI agents that could be providing necessary information to the consumers and even doing some simple tasks like uh, you know, making the appointments for them. So while they're on our session with our AI assistant, get all the answers uh, they need uh, answered uh, and then be able to make the appointments to make it that much simpler for them to go get their vaccines. That makes a lot of sense. Taking a step back, what are you seeing in the broader AI market that gets you excited about the future? Well, I would say the past 12 months uh, has been sort of a, a very slow burn, right? And I think it's partly because there's been lots of uh, bad press about you know hallucination of AI, the cost to run AI, you know unavailable GPUs that you know companies can't you know get their hands on. So we've addressed all of those challenges. And what we're seeing now is we are actually seeing a quite a bit of uptick 
uh, from companies wanting to deploy the solution. Now they're still fairly cautious, right? They want to do you know a certain amount of uh, pilots uh, to make sure that this is indeed going to um, deliver the result that they're expecting. Um, and after the pilots, they will go into production. So. You know, we've been working with some uh, you know, healthcare partners like Medivisor, uh, Intervent, uh, Members Only Health, uh, and they believe in the technology to be able to help drive their business in a more efficient way and ultimately provide better you know, patient support and customer experience. Now you touched on this a little bit. I wanna dive deeper into this. How, how do you think about people's hesitancies and fears surrounding AI? Yeah, so, you know, again, I think there's been lots of hype and, and you know, just as much misinformation out there. Um, our AI assistant um, has been designed and architected in a way that it can only provide answers that's supplied and validated by the companies that the consumers are dealing with. So it is not searching for the internet to come up with a probabilistic answer it is looking at a small data set for a deterministic answer. And that makes it uh, completely different than trying to have this unwieldy open AI uh, that you know, they have to try to put guardrails around. Our system has been designed and architected in a way that it is, it is not um, designed to hallucinate and provide accurate, relevant answers. And I think, um, you know, once people have their experience uh, with uh, these helpful AI assistants, I think the, uh, the you know, general sentiment is going to change. And I think they'll realize how helpful it is to the consumers and to the businesses, because we all know there's, you know, labor challenges in certain industries. And those are the industries like healthcare and automotive that we've decided to target first. All right, we'll leave it there. This has been Paul Chang, the CEO of Brand Engagement Network. I'm Jarrett Banks, signing off from the NASDAQ market site.